This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Um, the next bit is, remember, as far as the cost of equity is concerned, um, if you're using the growth model, what we're doing is working backwards. We're saying the reason the market value there is 37 is because shareholders are expecting five cents growing at 5.74% and because shareholders are requiring 20.3% return. And all we've done is work backwards. If the market value is 37, it must mean that shareholders are happy with 20%. All right? The problem, though, of course, is that in real life, you're never certain what dividends shareholders are expecting and if they were expecting a different growth rate then what we've done is a bit silly if they were expecting 8% we should have worked back on 8% you understand me? and so any answer we get there is perhaps dangerous uh, which is why far more likely is that when he asks you to work out cost of equity Instead of giving you dividend information, far more likely, he'll give you information about the risk of the share uh, and you'll use capital asset pricing model. So it depends what information he gives you, but much more likely to work out cost of equity. As I say, it's practice at looking at the information, which is why I'll give you several questions um, shortly. But... If you've got dividend information, you use the dividend growth model. If more likely it gives you information about betas, then you'll work out um, cost of equity using capital asset pricing model. And so look at this one. I'll start it, you finish it. I'll give you more sheets on other bits of capital asset later. But the basic formula there, you're given on the formula sheet that if we know the beta of the share, the risk of the share, that formula will give us the shareholder's required return. Okay? And so look at the question. I'll say, I'll start it, you can finish it. Uh, the company is financed as follows. They've 10 million shares, quoted at $1.20. In addition, they've 6 million 9% irredeemable debentures. I've told you here the beta of a share in the company, market return risk free rate corporation tax. Ultimately, we want the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, to get weighted average, I'm going to do this slightly in reverse, uh, but as before, we need cost of equity, cost of debt. The cost of equity equals the shareholder's required return. Well, this formula you should all remember and be happy with. That since we're given the beta of a share is 0.85, uh, use the capital asset formula that it equals RF plus um, ERM minus RF times beta. RF, remember, is the risk-free rate, so the risk-free rate here is 12%. Shareholders will want to return, they'll want 12% plus a premium, depending on the risk. The risk is beta times the market premium. Um, the market, the market's giving 20% ERM. The risk-free rate is 12. The market's giving a premium of 8%. If we have a beta of 0.85, we'll want 0.85 times the premium. And so the required return, and therefore, uh, the cost of equity. Is it 18.8%, please? Is everybody happy there? Uh, just one tiny thing to watch for. As I keep saying, it's far more likely you'll be using betas in the exam. Um, check the wording carefully. Sometimes he gives you the market return, as I did here. The market's giving 20, so 20 minus 12 and so on. Other times, 
he just gives you this premium and he calls that the equity premium. And so it's a silly point, but it's when you're rushing, you misread and do silly things. If he gives you the equity premium, 8%, then uh, we all want risk three plus beta times the equity premium. Is that clear? Okay, so that's cost of equity. As far as cost of debt is concerned, here it's irredeemable, which I said is less likely, but it happens. It's on the summary sheet I gave first, but if it's irredeemable, it's easy. It's simply the cost of the company is the after-tax interest as a percentage of the market value. Or, remember that's what it's costing the company, the after-tax interest on market value. The investor themselves, though, we never deal with income tax, so the investor is receiving the full interest on the market value. And so it's KD, the return to the investor, times 1 minus T, because the company gets tax relief. Now, in this particular one, we've got a problem. The cost of the company, normally, if it's irredeemable, the after-tax interest is a percent of market value. Or, it's the return to the investors, the interest on market value, less the tax benefit, so times 1 minus t. All right? Here we've got a problem in that these debentures are unquoted, and of course, because they're unquoted, we don't know market value. If we knew the market value of the debt, we could stick it in the form and it's easy. Here, we don't know market value and so we can't. We're going to have to use the second approach. Anybody please read the question. I said earlier, I know you two haven't arrived, but in the exam, Always you're having to make assumptions. Write down your assumptions and you'll get credit for it. Have a look at the question. Tell me, please. What are we going to have to assume? What will be the return to the investor? What return will debt lenders want? Anybody, any suggestions? Sorry? Spell. Yeah. Uh, you have no alternative. Uh, if he told you the return that debt lenders want, then no problem. If I said debt lenders want 15% um, return, 15% finished, yeah, company gets tax relief. Here, because I've not told you, you've got to assume that the debt is risk-free. It's an assumption, there's no other information. And therefore, if it is risk-free, then the return to the investors, or KD, will be 12%, the risk-free rate. It's an assumption, but as I say, you have no choice here at all. There's no alternative. Uh, but if the investors do want 12, the company will pay 12, but the cost to the company they pay 12% to the investors, but the company gets tax relief at 30%. Well, as I wrote before, it'll be KD times 1 minus T. Or Am I right here? 8.4 percent? So we know cost of equity, 18.8. Uh, .8. We know the cost of debt, 8.4. Finally, we need the weighted average cost of capital.
and the weighted average cost of capital. Always your weight by market values. But we've another problem. We know the total market value of equity. Equity of 10 million shares quoted at a dollar 20. What we don't know, but we need, of course, is the market value of debt. Who fixes the market value of debt, please? The market, well, the debt lenders, the investors. And how can we work out the market value of debt? Surely it's that other formula backwards that we know that the return to investors, KD, is the interest on the market value here are for a hundred dollars nominal we're already forced to assume that debt is risk free and so investors want twelve percent that must be equal to the interest divided by, uh, as a percent of, the market value. So the interest, the coupon rate, they pay 9% on nominal, so the interest is $9 a year. The market value is what we're trying to get. And so the market value, I get to be, is it 75 the market value must be 75 for $100 nominal. Now we know the market value of debt. Uh, we've virtually finished. Uh, the debt, we've 6 million debentures. The market value is 75 per 100 nominal. So the market value of the debt in total is 4.5 million. Your faces are still worrying me. If you've lost me, shout. If you're happy, can you finish off, please? What's the weighted average cost of capital? Oh, that's right. No problem. Sorry, a bit more before I let you go. The trouble is there's so many little things you can throw in. But remember, cost of equity, be able to use the dividend growth model. Uh, be able to calculate cost of equity using betas. Cost of debt, if it's redeemable, it's internal rate of return, which we did in the first one. If it's irredeemable, uh, the cost of debt is the after-tax interest on market value. All right, we have the funny bit here, working backwards for market value. But otherwise, I hope no problem. However you've calculated them, weighted average always. Weight by the market values of each source of finance. Okay? Fine.